Hello, I'm Russell. I'm Tom. We're editors, and you're watching Soul Musica. You don't know love like you used to. You don't feel love like you did before. So at the moment, the tour feels good. I mean, the record came out at the beginning of the summer, so I think people have had a bit of a time to digest the record. So maybe over the summer, some of those festivals, the newer songs felt quite new. But I think now, um, you know, two or three weeks into the tour, the album's been out for a while, the new songs feel like they're fitting in nicely with the old songs, and a couple of them in particular are the highlights of the set for us at the moment, so it's, it, the shows are good. It's nice to draw from four records worth of material and play, you know, for... For a good time. You ran with the dead today, with the moles from the CIA. They say more than you ever say. Uh, well, yeah, I think all the records are different. Uh, they've all got their own place, and um, uh, I think the, the difference between album three and four is quite a lot. I mean, there was it was very dense, and there was lots of synthesizers. Uh, with this record we wanted to get back to more organic instruments and uh, play the songs very straightforwardly and, um, in the presentation um, yeah that's about it yeah I mean there's a big difference that the guitarist is different has changed so Chris was such a big part of our sound on the first three records and he didn't work out with him in the making of this record so when we got a new guitarist in we didn't want someone just to be like Chris you know it, was, it wasn't the point to get part two Chris you know so Justin plays guitars very differently to Chris ever would have done on any of our previous records. Ah, well, it was... Ob oh, well. It's been a funny two or three years, because after we made the third record... We fully intended to make the fourth one with Chris, and we tried for quite a long time with most of the songs that are on this record um, to record them and rehearse them. We recorded them, some of them in you know numerous ways, and we never found a place with the material that any of us thought was good enough. So um, at that point, after a couple of well, a year and a half of trying to do that, we was like, well, well how are we going to make our next record, guys? It was like, well, we can either split up and call it a day, or me, Russell, and Ed decided to go on without Chris. So that was a very damaging and dark time for the band, obviously. The only thing you can really compare it to is a relationship breaking up, I think. Um, but now, um, you know, the two new guys came in, suddenly there was a new energy and different sort of opinions, you know, and different playing styles. Elliot's voice is a big thing on this record. Like I said before, Justin plays guitar differently and everything was fresher. So it reinvigorated us as well as the whole band you know it feels like the beginning of a new chapter uh, we well we don't really speak so um, I, you know it's, it's a big thing being in a band with somebody um, but our relationships had uh, degenerated uh, and you know this it got to a point where we weren't communicating and uh, we didn't really see each other away from the band so I don't know it's stayed the same really I'm, I'm sure there'll become there we will be a day where we do have a beer and we you know we meet up um, and from reports because obviously we have friends that are you know friends with him and I think he's he's happier now that he's not in in editors and you know doesn't have to do a lot of the things that he didn't like doing. Um, so, yeah. You ran with the dead today Through the cemeteries where ghosts still play Sessions were great. I mean, we, we did a lot of rehearsing with the songs because we're a new band. We had a couple of shows that we had to do, but also just, you know, I think just making... No, we wanted the record to feel like a band record. We didn't want to, you know, realise what we were going to do with it in the studio. We wanted it to be fully formed pretty much before we went to Nashville. So 
the songs were very well rehearsed. Uh, we knew what we were doing with most of them, and um, we thought, you know, I, I think for a long time we've wanted to make a record in America, so we sent the songs to American producer Jakir, and he invited us to Nashville. So, um, you know, we were kind of like, you know, realizing a boyhood dream, I think, to go and make a record, English band making a record in America. It was a lot of fun. And in Nashville, you know, obviously it's quite, um, there's a cliched side to the musicality of that town, but it's still a music town, you know, the, 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 the city runs on it, you know. All the legends have, have played there, and most of them have recorded in the studio that we worked. So it was, a, it was a lot of fun being in that environment. You felt the kind of slight presence of greats that had been there before you, and you felt like you had to up your game. And because we had the song so well rehearsed, it was really just about getting in there, getting good sounds and good performances, and being a band. It felt quite old fashioned. Well, yeah, th with Jakir, he wanted to capture the the sound of the band because he he knew that this was a a band refreshed with you know new members, uh, and he wanted people to hear that and hear how we were playing. So there's there's nothing like pieced together; they're all just takes. Um, and I think he got one of the best drum and bass sounds out of all of our records, really. Um, you know, I think he captures something really you know well and he did I think we used that as like the backbone to most of the record and alongside that you know I think when we're talking about the songs we I think we all wanted to use orchestrations on top of this kind of rock band um, you know foundation that we were we were planning on doing so some of the songs have more you know strings than we've ever used before and brass as well so that's nice to kind of I think early on in our careers we'd been a bit scared to to do that and I think four albums in now and all been a little bit older I think it felt like the right time to try to embrace those elements well I mean I mean floods floods production isn't really on this record although we did we did um record some of the songs with him with Chris uh, and you know, those songs I doubt will ever be heard because um, you know none of us, Flood, Chris and all of us didn't think they were good enough to, to put out there, I mean hence the problem in why everything kind of went wrong really um, but um, when we did make the decision to move on without Chris it was Flood's idea to contact Justin Justin is our new guitarist, is someone that Flood had worked with a lot so you know, Flood does cast a shadow over this record to some extent, and um, not really as a producer, more as a friend, and um, yeah, it's one that helped us out when we were in a bad time. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think nearly every song is a love song of a type. Um, they're certainly all songs sung from one person to another, um, you know. Um, with no care of anything that goes on outside of this relationship of two people. and um, Some of them are slightly more traditional in their kind of um, love nature, something like the phone book or even something like nothing. You know, I think those songs are quite easy to read and understand. They're, you know, they're, although they're slightly dark, they're still love songs. Um, but there are other songs that, there are a couple of breakup songs on the record, which is obviously, you know, kind of love falling apart. And there's also a kind of a, a thread of... Um, relationship songs that are kind of creepy and stalker-esque, kind of like obsession, and uh, that creeps into things like Sugar. Um, and, um, I mean, I don't know why I, I... It was a deliberate decision at some point to really focus in on, on love as a topic. I'd never really sung about it in any depth before. Um, and um, they're not diary entries, most of them. Um, you know, they have a very settled life away from the band, and a very happy one. I guess, I guess some of the songs that are more traditional in their kind of loving nature, you, I can draw, I can see, you know, they're very personal. But the ones that are kind of like creepy and sinister, I, I let my imagination kind of get, you know, get carried away with itself. And I think that's the job of a writer to do that, because nobody's life is that interesting just to be putting songs, <laughs> you know. I want to talk about Sugar, in my opinion, the most peculiar song in, in the album, which with a kind of Arabic way Where did you find the inspiration? Um, that was a, a quite an important one because that was the one, I think the one, 
the first thing we did very early on, even when Chris was in the band, that kind of bass and drum rhythm was something that was probably the first thing that we did that's made, ended up on this record. And it was, it felt quite rock and simplified compared to what we'd done before. There's no kind of like, you know, the drums were a lot sparse than they've ever been on one of our songs before. And um, it had this kind of, you know, rock groove. And, um, and when the new boys came in, you yeah, know, we built on that and it did take a little bit of an Eastern kind of or an Arabic um, turn in its rhythm and some of its melodies. And um, I don't know, I think... I think bands like the Bunnymen have used them to um, quite a good effect in, in, in the past and very dramatic. We like drama in our music. It almost feels quite cinematic as well, like something from a James Bond film or something like that, you know. And we like stuff like that, you know. It's stuff that, um, yeah, it's just a bit over the top. So I think that song certainly is as over the top as we've ever been. I mean, like the three videos, uh, we worked with Mark Thomas, who we'd worked with on the Munich uh, video, and we, we went for a performance piece with A Ton of Love, uh, just so that people could uh, see our faces and see the new band. Um, you know, and it's, you know, it's quite straightforward. Um, I think it, it was important because we'd been away for such a long time between the third record and the fourth to show that we'd not all gone, got fat, you know, and, you know, we, you know, and, and, and like Russell said, it was a new band, so yeah. And then uh, the, the weight, uh, yeah, because um, Justin and his brother make films and um, uh, very good with cameras. And we, they came out. His brother came out, filmed us whilst we were in the studio. And, and uh, when he was there, it was mainly that song. So um, yeah, the it's uh <laughs> all right. Uh, <laughs> hovering. Uh, yeah. So so with the the weight. Um, um, Justin's brother was out there for the for for that day when we were actually making that song, so he kind of captured everything that happened, and we, we pretty much did that song in that day. So it was quite fitting that um, the footage that he captured and uh, of the band performing, um, and also was. just wandering about, yeah, and wandering about. So because they were there, for, I mean, because Justin was filming a bit when we were there. And we made a documentary with the record, and it, it's part of that footage as well. And, you know, we had a story to tell with this album, so it's good to have some people there next to us that we trusted filming us making it, and it looks good. Um, from Alderhyde is Ben Wheatley, who's um, uh, an English um, kind of cult director, makes very dark films. Um, he's going to do Doctor Who, actually. I just, I just saw that today. He's going to do the first two editions of Doctor Who <laughs> soon. But um, uh, um, yeah, we just asked him if he'd like to do a music video because we like his films. And um, he said yes, and he filmed it in Spain. And um, do you know, can you remember the name of that place? I can't remember. It's where they did a lot of the spaghetti westerns. In the yeah. yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, it's filmed there. And sometimes, you know, with people, you know, obviously we're not in that video, but... Um, to have someone that you admire and you know, to, to, to want to make a video for you is like, oh yeah, great, we'll just do what you want, you know, and that's what he did, and it's a twisted little pop video. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was our first trip to Mexico, um, and we all had a great time. Um, the fans were really good. Shows were great, and yeah, we, we want to go back. We want to do more there. Uh, yeah, go further south as well. You know, it's uh, it's obviously a bit tricky for us because we're a European band, but yeah, we want to go over there. Uh, the, all the older songs I think are refreshed um, because we've got two members replacing one uh, we had to you know rework a lot of those older songs and so there's you know there's sometimes synth pads or you know w one thing we'd like a song like Munich uh, which we've played thousands of times uh, when Elliot came in and you know he played the riff on the Moog as well as the guitar it kind of re re worked itself and it's got new life um, it's the same with a lot of the, the songs 
and it was good to get people different to come and play on them.